Hey guys, so one of the things I showed on Sunday's MakerCast was my overhead light that is made with a 70 watt carb LED panel and an LED controller which comes with the RF remote which allows you to power it on remotely and control the brightness and that got a bit of interest so let's go have a look see how it's made so these are the parts you're going to need here and here and this is the light itself so you may think it looks a little bit funky because we've got the baffles here on only two sides um, I'll overlay a picture and just because of the layout of my work light I don't need any at the back and I don't need anything at the other side to stop a light spill but it's great to have them at the front and these can be angled up or down and left and right and it just stops the light spill in other parts of the room where I don't need it and make it in the way the monitors or whatever when I did build this it was a case of not to jerry rig it but I didn't want to go out and a whole lot of expense I kind of used what I had bolts wise so you'll notice I don't need to take these off to disassemble the light but these bolts don't go all the way through and they don't have to you know it's rigid enough and it works so I'm not gonna bother myself any more than that I must say up front I did find this light on Thingiverse I first come to these panels last year off Big Clive's video um, and they were fantastic so I immediately bought two and left them sitting there and then by the time I got around to doing something with them and had the idea to make a light and I bought some heat sinks which I did get the sizes completely wrong <laughs> I thought they would fill a lot more but I didn't measure up but quite comically in that time someone else had went and designed this light using this cob and using these exact same heat sinks that I'd bought so I thought I'm not gonna bother reinventing the wheel so I just used his design so, so let's open it up and I'll show you I did have to make a couple of modifications and I may still make a couple further modifications because I have a spare panel to use so these are just held in with M3 screws I only felt that I needed two in out of the four there it was a bit overkill so we'll just loosen this off one thing that the maker hadn't included was a mounting mechanism um, at all. He had, bar some holes in this plate, he had basically lost the files, which, you know, it happens, that's fair enough. Um, and he was kind enough to post the rest of it up, which gave a fantastic uh, head start. So I undo this. Um, we should be able to... This is the one thing that I saw separately was just a separate nut capture there. You see me going through all the way the pain of getting that one bolt out. Um, so this is one thing that I made that added to. Um, and basically it is an under shelf mount because I've got an IKEA shelf above here. Um, and that just slides into the shelf as you'd expect. It can pivot so you can have the light rotated further or back. Um, you've just got the one axis of movement, but you shouldn't really need any more than that if it's directly above where you are And that works great. One thing you have to be careful of is just the tolerances It is a bit of a tight fit. It's not actually not, it's not too bad in that one But the bolt going through I should have maybe made the hole a little bit bigger that would have worked better One another thing that I would change maybe is on his mountain plate. He has the wires coming out here but then when I've done this, maybe as you could see, I should modify my design to be sympathetic to his. I maybe just flatten that off at the bottom. It just pinches the wires a little bit there. And you can see they've been flattened off. And um, that's maybe something to keep an eye on. Okay. So that's just that one mountain mechanism. You have this generic plate. So you could just design anything that will go in there. Tripod mount or whatever. Um, out the back comes the LED controller. It says peak current output of 12 amps I wouldn't want to push this to 12 amps with the wires it comes with um, I did take this one apart just to check what was inside but there was nothing particularly interesting and um, that's how you'll notice it's yellow instead of white okay so the front of it you can see the cob LED and as I mentioned in the maker cast I ended up getting these two for free this one the coating had came off so that makes it a non-uniform color and on this one one of the LEDs is dead so again you get non-uniform color which it's not affected it in my application here but it could do if it was something that was visible so you got a front section here that's held on with four bolts I'll just speed this up okay 
Okay, that's those off. That detaches separately. What I did find was that this kind of shroud on the front is the one thing that wouldn't fit on my Prusa i3. Um, so you're going to need a bigger printer, no matter which way you angled it, just because of these um, little additions here for the baffles. So you may be able to modify it, cut these off if you feel you don't need those, but that's one thing to keep in mind. You'll notice the difference in texture as well. I actually use PTG for these and for the rest of it. But for this, I think I used regular PLA. And it's held up really well and it's not in direct contact with anything hot. So there's a another mounting plate. And that's just got a flange in it there. So it's going to press into the, the cob LED. And this is the reason why I had to undo the back section. Just so you can push this out. I know it seemed a waste, but... So yeah, so that's just a press fit in there. And you'll notice there's a section for the heat sinks. Now, there's only two in there, and I've actually been running this for months and months with just two on. Generally, I find I'll run it at about 50%, but even at that, for extended periods of time, it gets warm, but it handles it pretty well. But what I had done was ordered more heat sinks, so I got another six. And the idea was to make two of these lights. So this was to fully complete the design. And it's interesting, the first ones I got had no 3M back in, and these ones have got some 3M back in. So those just drop in there. And then the idea is you take the tape off. Place your panel in carefully, make sure the wires are going down that centre channel and then button it up and that's it really. Um, it's an extremely powerful light as if you'd watched Big Clive's video you've seen you can drive them with slightly higher voltage but what I do is I just drive it with a 12 volt wall watt type adapter and then you get the remote control once you use one of these LED drivers. And I did have, I think as I've mentioned previously, the idea of using one of these. And these are fantastic little drivers from a company called Wondom. Um, you feed in your VCC and ground, connect your LED panel up here. There's an enable pin. I did have the idea of hooking an ASP up. And then I could tie into Home Assistant. Um, you can set the constant current output that you want up to 1.2 amp, depending on the panel that you're using. So you could use a smaller panel with the same board but in all honesty the cost started adding up and adding up um, once you pay a Wemos D1 Mini say one of these with the panel you're getting in the territory where you could just buy an off the shelf light maybe it's not the 70 watt but you could buy something pretty decent and the idea was to try and do this as cheap as possible yes I already had these so I'm not the brightest I realize but yeah um, once I saw this guy's Thingiverse project and saw that he'd used one of these. I was a little bit skeptical, but these are truly cheap. I'll place a link down in the description. And they work fantastically well. They can take in between 5 and 24 volts. So if you wish to have a higher input, bump it up to something like 14, 15 volts, you can still do that, and you're going to get a higher light output, and it works extremely well. Um, I'll place links for everything else as well down in the description. So... That's it really, there's nothing much more to it. It's just a nice simple light. You can probably pull it all together for around about 10 pound, maybe it's just over. And for a 70 watt LED, that's not half bad at all. Okay guys, this is just a short one, so thanks for watching. Please feel free to like, subscribe, and comment down below.